watching No to Nine. Hello, and welcome to No to Nine. I'm David Leedy. Episode 71, Creating a Messaging App. Six weeks in the making. Okay, before we get in the show, I kind of have a lot of things to talk about um, before the demo, so uh, so bear with me, please. Um, first is domain consolidation. I've made a mess, and I'm trying to clean it up. Uh, I've got too many domains, and things are, are too hard to find. Uh, I started out with LotusNotebook.com, which was a, my original blog site. So then I did Notes9.com. Um, and then because Notes9.com is in WordPress, and I don't understand WordPress to save my life, uh, I created XPages.tv just to basically become an index for my shows because these shows aren't like a, a typical podcast, you know, that where it's topical and ages out. These shows have a much longer shelf life and, and I, I think that a lot of people aren't finding the older shows so I, I needed to try to clean that up a little bit and that's what the goal of xpages.tv was um, because I could use xpages rather than WordPress. And then I came out with xpagescheatsheet.com to support all the cheat sheets I was doing and, and all the demos and it's just, it's just a disaster. Um, so from here on out, I'm really going to try and focus on just notesin9.com and, and, and tie everything through that. So what does that mean? Well, Lotus Notebook, well, that's already dead because during a server move, I lost the database. But if I find it, I, I will try to get the content back. Um, again, I'm not a great admin. Um, xpages.tv, I'm going to kind of stop referring to it as xpages.tv and call it index.notesin9.com. Uh, for now or to come up with something better. Um, xpagescheatsheet.com, the same thing. Uh, the content isn't going away, uh, but it's going to be accessible under cheatsheet.notesin9.com. And I, I thought about trying to do notesin9.com slash index and notesin9.com slash cheatsheet, and that was just harder. You need like a web redirector role, and I saw some blog posts where it doesn't always work with, with X pages, pages, and stuff like that. So I knew how to do it this way. So, so these will hopefully be available by the time you see this show. Okay, and, and hopefully I'm going to uh, tie um, the, these, get these more integrated either into WordPress or some, some X pages template to be named later. And if anybody wants to help with this stuff, just let me know. Okay, before we get into the demo, here's what I really want to uh, talk about because I'm excited about that, is is what I'm calling Notes and Nine Drive to 99, and and this is my big event for the year. I, I like to try to do events now and then. I, I did this Wiki Madness with Chris Tui a couple years ago, uh, which produced some like 55 wiki articles or something like that. Then I like to do a, a week's worth of shows every now and then. So every now and then I just try to shake things up and step up the game. So so I'm. So this is it for this year. No to 9, drive to 99. Well, what is it? What well, The goal is to hit 99 episodes before the end of the year. This episode is 71, so I've got about 30 uh, to go to to get to the, the goal. I'm going to start September 9th, which is 99, no matter what country you're in, I think. And I'm going to end December 9th. See all the nines? Because I'm in the nines. So anyway, even though we don't do nine-minute shows anymore, but that's the theme of the show nine so what we're going to do, try and do is just just get good content out there because that's the goal of no to nine is always first and foremost just about getting some good content out there freely available to, for for x pages or maybe even we'll get a couple other topics in there uh, hopefully um Another goal is I want to build excitement for IBM Connect. IBM Connect is is the January conference, formerly known as as Lotusphere. Uh, this this event has nothing to do with the name change. I don't care about the name change. I care that there's a conference that talks about X Pages and the X Pages developers actually are there. Uh, so to me, that's worth uh, getting excited for. Um, I, I want to try and you know get some past contributors back on um, and, and give us some shows. I want to try to get some new contributors as part of this event. And, and hopefully some of the new contributors might even be from IBM because they, they have been known to hit taking notes and twill fairly regularly. Uh, so I'd love to get them on my uh, show. Uh, I'd love to get that guy from Chicago who's been promising me for a while to, to go on, uh, come on the show. And maybe even that guy who thinks he knows barbecue. Um, who's been promising for a while to come on. So uh, so hopefully he's lined up as well. So again, I'm just going to try and uh, browbeat and, and, and peer pressure as, as many people as I can to bring the, the best content that I can to you, and then uh, you can learn from it, and, and I'll learn from it also. Okay, so that's way more than I wanted to talk about that stuff, so let's get on with the meat of the show. 
This demonstration comes from a, a little company from the UK called WPCA. And, and their website is, is on the screen. And, and there's this guy, John Monroe, who's on Twitter. And I've talked to him about it a couple of times. And this is a, a small uh, uh, UK consultancy that, that does a lot of dealings with notes and, and, and X pages and stuff like that. And, and what, what I really want to focus on is, is the third name here, uh, Josh Jolly. And what he is, who he is, is he was an intern at the time. Uh, I believe he's moved on to a permanent job, but but he came to WPCA never hearing about notes. Uh, I believe he had some uh, computer uh, development experience, uh, but, but he's a young guy uh, um, without any notes or XPages experience. So within six weeks, he had built an application and the demo I'm about to show you comes from that application. So it's just a little demo that's a, a piece of a bigger application. But but I was really excited about this because, again, he was only about six weeks in at the time that he recorded this. Um, so now Josh, I believe, has moved on to a, a permanent job. But John, I think, told me that, that he has another intern in. Um, and she is getting up to speed on next pages. And I hope to get a, a demo from her as well to see how she's done in six to eight weeks or something like that. They also have this other website that they're working on. I don't believe it's really started yet, but xpagesdevelopment.co.uk is more of like a community site that, that they're going to try to do, so you might want to keep your eye on that as well. Okay, so with that being said, let's go to the demo and see what, what Josh has done uh, after about six weeks of, of xpages. Hi, this is Josh Jolly for xpagesdevelopment.co.uk. In this video, we're going to look at the creation of a basic messaging application which can allow users to send messages to one another and see messages which they've sent and received in their inbox. So let's have a look at how it works. I'm going to start by logging in. I'm going to log in as John Monroe. You see that in my inbox I have received messages and sent messages, both empty at the moment. So let's go ahead and send a new message. I'm going to use this name picker to choose someone from the server address book. Let's choose Fred User. And send him a message. You can see that if I look at my sent messages, that message is now uh, now being shown. I can open it up and look at the details. If I log in as Fred user, as you can see in the top right, and look at my inbox, then we'll see that the message now appears, and I can see the same details. This is the database that we're going to start off with. We have a single form called message. We have two views, received and sent, and three X pages. Each of these are empty, so we're going to look at those later. The message has five fields, the form, sorry, has five fields. We have the subject, body, sender, and recipient, which are all editable text fields, which are fairly self explanatory. The date field is a date time field, uh, which is computed when composed with a value of at now. That just means that when the document is saved, the current date and time will be put into that field. So, the first thing I'm going to need is an application layout. So, let's create a new custom control, we'll call it layout. We're just going to use the standard extension library One UI layout. So we're just going to drag that in. We're going to leave everything as default. We're going to enable the left column and middle column as drop targets for later on. First thing we need to do is add a way for users to log in and log out. So we do this in the utility links area. We're going to start by adding a user node. This is going to display the user's uh, user's name. Uh, or anonymous if they're not logged in. The only thing we need to do here is change the label to this piece of code, which is going to crop up a few times in the application. Next we need a login and log out node, which is going to blank the label here and leave that as it is. And the last, we're going to have a basic node. The href for this node is going to be this piece of code label is going to be logout and we only want to display it when someone's actually logged in i.e. they have a username which is not anonymous so we're going to change the rendered property to this which means if their session username is not, is not anonymous then we'll display it. So there's our login and logout control. We need a couple more links in our title bar. We're going to add a page link node which is just going to point to our inbox. So we'll change the label and the page. 
and in our place bar we're going to add an item which can allow us to compose a new message. So another play sync node. With a label of compose message and new message as the page. And that'll do for our layout. Let's have a quick look at it. And that looks fine. So let's create a form which is going to allow someone to actually create a message. So we've made a new customer control again. We're going to call this form new message. Start off by defining our data source. It's going to be a domino document using a message form. Full action, we'll leave everything out as it is. Date is being handled by the formula. Sender, we're going to handle it a slightly different way. We're going to choose the other three fields and drag them on. Uh, we're going to have a submit button and you know, we want error messages in there as well, so we'll just leave that as it is. The body, this field looks a little bit small for a, you know, for a message. We might want a bit of a longer message. So we're going to delete that and change it from an edit box to a multi-line edit box. We need to bind this to the same field, which is the body field from document one. And let's create, let's change the size of that to make it 20 by 50. It's a bit more respectable. It's going to change the width of the subject to make that match up and look a little, look a little bit neater. The last thing we need to do here is add the name picker. The name picker is from the extension library again. I'm going to drop that here just before the recipient and look at its properties. Uh, a name picker must have a data provider. We're going to use an NAB name picker, which I think is a notes address book. The address book selection is going to be all, and the name list just one people. Lastly, we need to, to define what, uh, which input control the name picker is selecting a value for. I'm going to choose recipient one. So that's going to do for our form. Uh, let's put the layout onto our new message page and the form into the middle class here. And let's see what that looks like. That's pretty good. Can't test the name at the moment because this is on a, a local server. We've got the subject, we've got the body, we've got the submit button, so that's fine. So now we need a new way, a way to display the messages. So let's create another custom control. We're going to call this view message. And unsurprisingly, we're going to add a view control. We're going to use the receive view to start with. And you can see that we've got the uh, recipient, sender, the subject, and the date. Now, we only want to show messages that have been sent to the person who's currently logged in. So, what we're going to do, how, the way we're going to do that is looking at the data tab here. We're going to filter by column value. And we're going to use this code again. So this is going to filter the uh, recipient column. It's going to only show documents where the re recipient is the person currently logged in. I'm going to sort them by date. It's going to change another couple of, uh, of properties in the view. We're going to open the selected document using read message rather than an X page. We're going to hide this column because all the values are going to be exactly the same so it's not really useful. I'm going to make the subject column show as links. I'm going to change the formatting of the date column. At the moment it's being displayed as a string. We want to display it as a date time field which can allow us a few more uh, formatting options. We want to show the date and the time in the following style. So there's our first view. Uh, received. So let's go ahead and add another view underneath. This is going to be sent. And we're just going to edit this in exactly the same way. So we're going to filter by the same column value. We only want to see uh, documents that the user has sent. Sort by date. To open again with read message. Senders are all going to be the same, so we're going to change that. We want to show subject as a link and date as a date time. So 
So in our inbox, let's add our new view control. Let's see how our inbox looks. Okay, we've got our, front, our received messages and our sent messages. We don't really want to see them both at the same time. So let's add, let's create a new control, which is going to allow us to choose which one we want to view. So this is going to be a navigator control, again from the extension library. We're going to add a couple of basic nodes to this. The first one is going to be called received, and the second one is going to be called sent. So let's add a couple more properties from this. The submit value is a value when you click on that node, it uh, it submits that value to the context. So we're going to have that as received, and then the selected shows whether the uh, the selected property governs whether it's highlighted or not, whether the node is highlighted in the uh, in the navigator. So we're going to use this bit of code, which says basically, if this node has been clicked, then it's it's or if no nodes have been clicked, then this one is selected. And then the sent, we're going to do the same. We have the submit value as sent, and the selected just says if if this node has been clicked, then it is selected. So there's our navigator. We're going to drop that into our inbox again. This time on the left. Let's have a look at our inbox. Now you see that received is selected, sent is not, but we can't change them. What we need to do here is add an event handler into our navigator. Under events, say on item click, we're going to have a partial update. And if I save this, it's going to throw up a problem. And the problem is that it's it doesn't recognize this tag. This is a bug, I think. All you have to do to fix that is change from XE to an XP and save again, and it works fine. If we refresh our inbox page, we see that now we can click on them, and whichever one is clicked is selected. But this doesn't help us with our views, so let's change that. Let's open our view message to control again. I'm going to use the same context submitted value to govern which view is visible. So we're using the same code as before. Say if, if the received node on the navigator has been clicked, or if no nodes have been clicked, then this is visible, then, uh, then the received view is visible. Otherwise, if sent is clicked, then the sent messages are going to be visible. So let's try that again. This time you can see that we've only got one view showing the received. And if we click this, and we've got the sent. We've just got a couple of things left to do. On our original form, we need a way to store the sender's name. The way that we're going to do this is by selecting the custom control, going to events. Under events, you see the data document one. We're going to put this in the query save document uh, section and add a new event. We're going to have that as modify field. The field name is going to be sender. The value is going to be person's username. And the data source is going to be just document one. And what that means is that uh, when the document is being saved in the query save document, then this field name is just going to be, the sender field is just going to be updated with the person's username automatically. We we'll save that. Finally, we need a way for people to view messages. If we use the, uh, the new message form, then we're only going to see these three fields. We really want to see all of them. So let's create a new custom control. We'll call it form read message. Once again, we're going to define our data source. This time, we don't want to create a document, we just want to open a document. And we're going to drop all the fields in this time, so we want to see as much data as possible. And 
so that's pretty much all we need. So on our read message fields, we're going to add layout and then our new read message form into the middle. And that's our application more or less complete. So we can create new messages, we can send new messages, receive messages, and we can read the messages that we have received and sent. So that's the end of the video. Thank you for watching. Um, I'll see you next time. Uh, please visit xpagesdevelopment.co.uk. Thanks a lot. And that's the demo. Uh, if you have any questions for me on this slide, I guess I have to remove some of these domain names uh, based on what I said earlier in the show. But if you do have any questions for me, this is my contact information. And I do thank you for your time.